Hello, how's it going? This video might be a little simple. I'm making it anyway, and the reason I'm making it is not because this is some super complicated, mind-blowing concept, but rather because I've been hit with it multiple times. And the examples I go through here will be pretty cut and dry, I'll say, but when it comes up in the wild, it's a little, little more perni pernicious, so to say. So, um, I'll get to it. This video is entitled The Perils of Unsigned Math in C++. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for instance, that we have an unsigned integer. Okay, great. And let's go ahead and subtract them. So we'll say... Okay, and let's go ahead and do it both ways. You know what I'm doing. You know where I'm going with this. Okay. All right, so take a look. 42 minus 32 is 10. Yep, perfect. That's what we expect. 32 minus 42 is something really big. Now, like I said, these are just little toy examples. So obviously if this comes up in your program, it should be pretty easy to diagnose where it's happening. This has come and bit me at least twice, I'll say. The first case is when I was doing software rendering and I was drawing polygons and I needed to do what's called an edge table. So you have a collection of points, which are the corners of the polygon, and you want to do modular arithmetic because you want to wrap around from the end of the list to the beginning. So you're doing modular arithmetic with some subtractions, numbers go negative, and then you get these unexpected memory accesses. It's really bad. And then the other case this has occurred recently was when I was working on one of my game projects and I had a whole bunch of frames. So I had a circular buffer. You've got like 60 different color buffers that you're rendering to and you want to either step forward in time or step backwards in time let me do another case let me say okay so again totally just an arbitrary toy example right when would we when would this happen if you saw it you would see it but again it's just something to be aware of this can happen so if we go and subtract from c every time and we're constantly checking to see basically when c becomes negative then that'll basically never happen we can run this and see that pretty soon we loop back around to you know all ones and yeah we're never going to be negative. On the other hand, we can always just readjust, readjust that because we will be zero. So if I do this right now, boop, we get down to one and then C goes to zero. And so that loop ends. But it's just, you know, it's like I say, it's just something to be aware of. Um, let me go another case. As you can see, we can initialize an unsigned integer with a negative value. And then that just that just comes out to, if we were to display this in binary, it would be all ones. And that's not even something to be angry about. Like that literally is the additive inverse of one. If I add one to this number, it'll all go to zeros. So it's, it's behaving logically, it's consistent. And then I guess the last thing I'm just giving a bunch of examples here. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about modular arithmetic. So things get even funkier. Let's say, um, yeah, let's not even, let's not even say we're dealing with unsigned integers. Let's just deal with integers. In this case, we do get the appropriate answer of two. But then the thing is, in C++, 
the modulus operator is not so well defined with negative numbers. So if I go negative 10, I would be expecting two, I'd say. We have a quotient of negative three. Negative three times four is negative 12, remainder of two to get us up to negative 10. Okay, yeah, and in this case, in this case, it turns out okay. Um, but of course, if we're unsigned, we go negative. It's just messed up. It's messed up. I mean, that's, that's just me, my little thing. I just wanted to quickly pop this out there. It's not such a big deal, but, um, it's just something to be aware of and like I've been saying this whole video, if, if we sit here and look at toy examples, it's very easy to spot. But if you're not looking for it in a code base, this can be a very frustrating source of errors. Anyway, so this has been just my little warning on the dangers of unsigned integer math. And yeah, that'll be it for now. I'll see you again soon. I've been trying to make more of these videos. I'm gonna, yeah. All right. Cheers. Bye.